guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I am finally back with another bump date. <laughs> my dog just yawned in case you were wondering what that noise was. I have not filmed a bump date in, let's see, I think the last one I filmed was 32 weeks and I am currently 37 weeks and one day pregnant. So, it's been a while and I'm so sorry. I know someone, I posted a video today and someone like asked me where my bump dates went. And um, I know I'm not going to get too much into it because I know you guys came here for the bump date, but we moved into a new house. We set the nursery up. Um, I've just had a lot going on, so I really haven't gotten around to filming bump dates, but I really want, I'm not going to promise it, but I really would like to do one every week until I deliver. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sitting on my birthing ball. If you guys see me rolling or bouncing, that's what that is. So this bump date is going to be my update for my 37th week of pregnancy and just kind of recapping the last couple of weeks but not really um, just to update you guys on some stuff that's been going on so I'm just gonna get right into it um, hopefully this video doesn't end up being super long but I haven't really done many bump dates so I will fill you guys in on what my pregnancy has been like since 32 weeks when I last spoke to you so for 37 weeks um, apparently Brody is the size of a winter melon and um, that puts him at about 19 to 22 inches long and about six and a half pounds. So it's safe to say at this point that there is a full term sized baby in my belly, which is crazy. He's most likely his birth length already. I don't think they grow as far as like inches go um, much more, you know, I only have two weeks and six days left, so as far as length goes, I don't know how much longer he's going to get, but I know the longer he's in there, the more weight he will pack on. 37 weeks used to be considered full term, and now it's been changed and it's considered early term. Obviously, the longer he is in my belly, the better it is. There's still a lot of brain development going on right now, so I obviously want him in there you know, as long as he needs to be, to be considered healthy when he comes out. Before I jump into my... 37th week. I did have a growth ultrasound at 34 weeks um, and like one day. Um, I had the growth ultrasound because I have my appointments on Wednesdays and I was in the office for my doctor's appointments. I have them all scheduled really early in the morning just to get them over with and um, I mentioned to my doctor, you know, at every single um, doctor's visit I do, my doctor, he measures my belly with the measuring tape, um, he checks the baby's heartbeat, and they check my weight, my blood pressure, very standard. And when he was checking my belly with the measurement, I asked him if it checked out okay because I keep getting comments that I am small. Um, and I know that everyone carries babies differently, but the small comments were really starting to get to me and he said, you know, they're just not used to seeing thin pregnant women, although I don't feel thin at all, <laughs> and I also don't feel small. Um, but he said, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll do a growth ultrasound. It's really slow today, I won't charge you. So I thought that was really awesome. Um, my doctor does have an ultrasound tech and machine in his office, so I just walked right over to the ultrasound room and they did one for me. Based on my 34 week ultrasound, at 34 weeks he was measuring five pounds and two ounces. That was three weeks ago, so I am anxious to see how much he weighs now, but three weeks ago, so almost a month ago, he was already at five pounds, which they did all of the measurements and everything, and they said that Brody was in the 47th percentile, which my doctor said, you know, 50 percentile is like right in the middle. So he is basically, you know, just average. He's not too small, um, but he's not too big. He's just right where he's supposed to be, right on track. My pregnancy, you know, it's just been pretty normal so far. I haven't had too much... Um, to complain about but my movements have started to get a little bit less and my doctor does have me doing kit counts and I write it down on a sheet and he has me bring it in every week um, but I was there for my 36 week or my 36 week appointment and I mentioned to him that that morning Brody wasn't moving that much so he hooked me up to a non-stress test or an NST which basically basically measures the baby's movements and if you have any contractions, um, the baby's heart rate, things like that. Um, but the next day came around and I still wasn't feeling him move as much. So I decided to go down to labor and delivery because I called the office and on top of not feeling him as much, I also started getting like 
excessive swelling only in my right leg and my right arm. So when I told them that, plus the decreased movement, they said they wanted me to go get checked out. They wanted to make sure I didn't have a blood clot, which was kind of scary. But I spent probably like six hours in labor and delivery. And Brody ended up being fine. His movements were fine. I do have an anterior placenta, so it's extremely hard to feel him. Um, it has been the whole pregnancy. You know, he's a very calm baby, but I guess he probably does move a lot. And I really just don't feel it because my placenta is so anterior that it just blocks me from feeling basically all of his movements. I checked to see if I had a blood clot at the hospital. I do not have a blood clot. So they chalked up the swelling to be, um, basically what it is, is the way Brody is laying in my belly, he's got his head in like the right hand side of my pelvis, almost in like my right groin area, and then his back and his butt comes up on this side, on the left side, and then his feet are over here. So based on where his head is sitting, he is basically cutting off the circulation and the blood flow to the right side of my body. So my right foot and my right leg and my right arm, all of it swells and um, it gets more like tingly and numb than the left side does. And the left side is like normal pregnancy swelling and the right side is like Nutty Professor fat suit. So it's, it's definitely pretty frustrating and it's very uncomfortable. They said they were gonna do an ultrasound just to check his fluid before they sent me on my way. And when they did that, they were kind of concerned because it didn't really look like he had much fluid. So they sent me for more of an extensive ultrasound. Um, and it turns out that at 36 weeks, my fluid levels were only measuring 7.53 centimeters. So what that basically means is um, 10 to 12 is like, I think at actually 10 to 22 centimeters is normal, but I think 12 centimeters of fluid is average. And um, his was only measuring 7.53. So they did tell me that if your amniotic fluid levels get to five centimeters or less, it's grounds for immediate delivery. Um, doesn't necessarily mean C-section, but it means like the baby has to come out ASAP. So it was kind of scary because they said that your fluid levels were normal, but they're on the very low side of normal. So they told me that they wanted me to not really be on bed rest, but they said just to rest as much as I could. So no excessive walking. They said if I needed to go to the store to grab something, that's fine, but like I can't go to the store just to walk around or the mall. Um, they said don't go out of my way to really like move a lot and just do things. They wanted me to just rest a ton and to drink like two gallons of water a day. I won't go too much into it, but low amniotic fluid levels at the end of pregnancy is very scary and the only way to fix it is to have your baby. And I am only 37 weeks and at the time I was 36 weeks, so I definitely didn't want him to come out and um, it can just cause complications and even like stillbirth and things like that. So that's not something that I want to mess with. So I rested as much as I could and I drank at least a gallon a day of water and um, just tried to have as much fluid as I could. At my 37 week appointment, which finally brings me to my 37th week, um, they did a repeat ultrasound just to check his fluid, nothing else, and it went up to 8.5 centimeters, which, or they said eight and a half centimeters, they didn't tell me the exact number. So they said that was good, um, it's going in the right direction. She said that even if it stayed at eight and a half centimeters, um, that that would be safe to deliver at as far as like my fluid levels go. But my goal is to just keep drinking as much water as I can so that it goes up even more. But they did say that your fluid levels normally decrease at the end of pregnancy anyway. So I'm battling my fluid levels already decreasing on their own, plus they're decreasing for some reason. Um, they checked his kidneys though, and I don't think he has anything wrong with those. I, I, I really don't know what it is. I'm not leaking amniotic fluid, so um, we're not really sure why they're on the lower side. Before my 37th week appointment, which I had yesterday, um, like I said, they checked his fluid, which was fine. They did another NST or non-stress test, and my OB said that Brody looked great on the non-stress test too. And um, as far as weight gain goes, for 37 weeks, I've officially gained 36 pounds um, throughout my pregnancy, which puts me at 171 pounds, and I feel, I feel huge. Everyone has told me, though, that I'm carrying it very well. Um, I kind of agree with that. I don't feel like my face looks really, really big. 
My arms, I definitely notice it in my arms and my thighs and my butt, um, probably the most. But everyone that sees me, they're like, oh my gosh, you're all belly. So I don't know, but I've gained 36 pounds. And I've only gained one pound between this week and last week. So my weight gain seems to be going down and I don't seem to be gaining as much because for a while I was gaining like anywhere from like two to four pounds every like two weeks. So it's, I think it's probably plateaued. I have finally gotten stretch marks. I know I kind of mentioned it probably in my last bump date or the one before that, but I did not escape pregnancy without stretch marks. I only have them on my left side though. Um, I'm starting to get them on my left hip and um, my butt cheek on the right side has tons of them and then my left butt cheek has some. So and then a little bit on my left thigh. So it's really just my midsection, none on my belly that I can see, and I'm gonna show you guys my belly at the end, but um, I'm really just getting them on my hips and my butt, which I personally feel like that's where I've gained the most of my weight, so it makes sense. I'm excited to get my membrane swept. Basically what that is, if you guys don't know what that is, it's like they go in and your doctor uses obviously a gloved finger, but they separate the, they basically just like go into your cervix and they sweep their finger like this and they separate the membrane that the baby is in from your cervix. It could break your water, like that's one of the risks of it, um, which is why doctors don't do it unless you're full term. But it also releases, this is what my doctor told me. He said that he does cervical, or he does um, membrane sweeps starting at 38 weeks because I think it only has like a one in seven chance of actually causing you to go into labor um, so it's not like guaranteed, but he said that by doing that, it causes your body to release prostaglandins, which is a hormone that your body creates and it causes your body to start labor. Um, I think that's what he said, but he said that doing that, um, increases your chances of going into labor on your own and not needing to be induced, um, because he doesn't really like inducing. I don't want to be induced unless I have to and he said that he would do that for me weekly until I have my baby so I will be getting one done at 38 weeks 39 weeks and 40 weeks and hopefully between 38 weeks and 40 weeks I go into labor that would just be great um, he said that if I don't have Brody by my due date then we will schedule an induction for 41 weeks which is May 24th so that means that no later than like May 24th, May 25th, Brody will be here. So I'm really excited. I'm going to show you guys my bump shot and then we will be done. You guys can see, but I, I know I don't look like I've gained too much weight, but I definitely feel it. But this is the belly from the front, from the side. From the other side. I know my lighting isn't the greatest, but I'm definitely, I don't know if this is a stretch mark or if it's just my belly button piercing stretching and not turning into a stretch mark. I'm not really sure. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the stretch marks that I do have are right here. They're very, very faint. So they may darken up after he's born, but as of right now, that's all I've got. And then some on my butt. But this is the belly from here. He's very, he is low. It doesn't look like he's super low, but this is all empty. Like this is nothing. So really, he doesn't start, I don't know, he doesn't sit any higher than this. So I'm waiting for him to drop more, <laughs> but this is the belly. He's definitely dropped though, that's for sure. And then from the back. 37 weeks. Thanks, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so sorry that I have not posted more of these. I'm gonna get better at it because I have nothing else to do and I have no excuse, but this was my first full week on maternity leave, so it's taken me a little bit to get into the swing of things. So I'm going to try to do one every single week until delivery. I am doing a labor and delivery vlog. Um, I do want to do just vlogging. So stay tuned for things like that. If you guys would like to, you know, keep in touch with when I'm having him and see pictures, I do recommend following me on like Instagram, Twitter, and or Snapchat because I do post 
pretty regularly on all three of those. Um, but on YouTube, it's harder because I have to like film and then edit and then upload. And that's not as easy as all my other social medias. So if you are interested in that and you have not followed me yet, I will go ahead and leave those in the box below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and subscribe if you would like to see more videos. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you all next week.